Hello students, we are going to start our next lecture of microeconomics. We have started our chapter of the production theory and it is uh, dependent on isoquants and isocosts. We have covered so many topics of this chapter and we have also started this topic of isoquants and in the previous lecture I have described that isoquant and indifference curve analysis these are same whenever you see their graphs in both cases isoquant and isocosts both curves are convex but the difference between the consumer theory and the producer theory is that in consumer theory you talk about satisfaction and that cannot be measured that's why we use the concept of ordering or we use the concept of indifference curve analysis that one thing can be preferred over other thing and in case of production theory there is the concept of isoquant analysis and according to isoquant theory the output can be measured into numbers it means you can hire the labor and the capital or by the combinations of both inputs you get the same level of output so I will revise also the previous lecture as we have started the concept of isoquant analysis and I have described the types of production curves there was the linear and Leontief production function we have described but before that what is the idea behind isoquant it shows all those combinations of inputs which are capable of producing the same level of output so that's why it is called production indifference curves as you can see here, this is like the indifference curves, but these are called isoquants because the quanti quantity can be measured or you can quantify these outputs. And you can see here, X shows the units of labor and Y shows units of capital. By using both labor and capital, you are producing the output. This is showing the 100, 200 and 300. All the points on indifference isoquant analysis which is showing IQ1 that gives the same level of output which is 100. This is convex. The reason behind the convexity is diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution it means you can leave some units of capital to hire some units of labor as you leave less units of capital and get some units of labor it gives you the diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution and we can draw the convex isoquant curve here we describe some assumptions of isoquants mostly we discuss two factors or inputs of production which are labor and capital we can also use the combinations of both labor and capital and these Factors of production are 
divisible into small units. It means you can use more labor or less capital or you can use more capital and less labor. So the technical conditions of production are not possible to change at any point of time and these factors of production used in a most efficient way. It means you have to use the labor and capital on a maximum point or on a maximum capacity. It means every nation should use their labor and capital on a maximal point which gives them the higher or the maximum production. And here there are different combinations of isoquant curve which are starting from A to point E and you can see there are some units of labor which are from 1 to 5 it means these are increasing and the units of capital these are falling down but the production is same it means you are hiring more laborers but because of labor intensive nation you have the less capital so, so you will use the less capital and more laborers but you will produce the same level of production this is showing the isoquant curve which is showing the different combinations of capital and labor which are giving you the same level of satisfaction it means you are talking about the production here which is showing 4000 whenever you are using some combinations of capital and labor here 20 20 and here it is showing 10 and near 40 so it means these will give you the same amount of production. Previously I have described the types of isoquants which were the linear isoquant and Leontief isoquant. These are some extreme cases of production theory or the production curve and whenever you talk about the linear isoquant it means their opportunity cost is constant and the labor and capital are perfect substitutes with each other and here these isoquants are showing the straight line and these are like the extreme cases like gas and oil you are using the substitutes and these are the perfect substitutes for each other either you can use gas or you can use oil that will give you the same level of output so these are considered the linear isoquants and here are infinite combinations are used in case of isoquant analysis you say that opportunity cost must be falling but in this case opportunity cost or marginal rate of technical substitution marginal rate of technical substitution it is here is infinity it means the substitutes are infinite but opportunity cost is constant and whenever you talk about Leontief factors of production it means you are using fixed proportion of labor and capital the factors of production these are not substitutes but these are complements it means these are jointly related with each other as we have discussed in the chapter of consumer theory 
There were also extreme cases of indifference curve analysis and those were linear and Leontief. And here you will use the example in terms of production theory and you can give some example of one molecule of water. It means by using hydrogen and oxygen it means hydrogen and oxygen are perfect complements with each other without that the molecule of water cannot be made so it means this is the best example of Leontief production function and in this case the marginal rate of technical substitution will be zero it means the hydrogen and oxygen cannot be substitutes but these are jointly related with each other here they have given the example another example of wheels and chassis and they can make some scooters by using these two complements these are jointly related with each other you can make scooters it means these are jointly related and these are showing the L shape there is some concept of marginal rate of technical substitution as we have described that this is showing that how the inputs can be substituted with each other to get the same level of output so this is called the marginal rate of technical substitution for capital and labor that can be equal to with minus sign marginal productivity of the labor over marginal product productivity of the capital the negative sign is important because it is showing the falling opportunity cost and that opportunity cost or the marginal rate of substitution is showing by this diagram and you can see here first of all you are leaving three units of capital to get one unit of labor and after that you are leaving one unit of capital for getting one unit of labor in this case whenever the isoquant or the indifference curve will be convex you will leave less units of capital to get extra unit of labor to maintain the same level of production and the law of diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution concept is related with the marginal rate of technical substitution and it means a property of production function stating that as less of one input is used increasing amount of another input must be employed to produce the same level of output it means the capital is constant but you are employing more units of labor so the input which you are going to increase it is actually showing the diminishing amount so this is showing the law of marginal rate of technical substitution or it is also called the marginal productivity of the labor there are some properties of isoquant analysis which are <clears throat> first of all these isoquant curve is downward from left to right whenever we have to increase some units of labor we must forego or leave some units of 
capital to maintain the same level of output and second property of isoquant theory is the isoquants are convex to the origin this is because of marginal rate of technical substitution and the theory behind the marginal rate of technical substitution is either you can use more capital or you can use more labor and here it is showing you are using more capital and leaving some units of labor so isoquants are convex to the origin and theory behind that is because of marginal rate of technical substitution that how two factors of production can be substituted with each other and from this analysis you can see this is showing 3 to 1 it means the marginal rate of substitution is going to fall third property of the isoquant analysis is the two iso product or isoquant curves cannot intersect with each other because the two curves cannot give the single combinations of two factors or the two curves cannot give the same level of output so that's why they cannot cross with each other fourth property is higher iso product or iso quant curves shows higher level of output it means this iq1 showing the 100 units and iq2 is showing 200 units higher isoquant analysis will give you the higher level of production but on the same isoquant analysis you get the same level of production and this is the main property that isoquant cannot touch to the x axis it means these will far away from the y and x axis because we will use some labor and capital combination without capital we cannot make anything and without labor we cannot make anything whenever they are touching on the axis it means here the labor is zero on the x axis and on the y axis capital is zero so it is extreme case it cannot be happened you can go through this and it is showing some isoquant analysis. However, if we move along the curve, we get different input combinations, but always the same amount of produced output. This relation gives us the marginal rate of technical substitution between these inputs, which is the slope of the curve in each of its points. An increase in production will only come when we displace the isoquant curves outwards. The shape of the isoquant curves does not limit to this single example. There are an infinite number of possibilities. Let's review two particular shapes. Our second example is an isoquant map with three parallel lines. This is the case for inputs which are perfect substitutes, since the lines are parallel and their marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to 1. And it is why the slope has an angle of 45 degrees with each axis. Our third example shows an isoquant map with three isoquants that represent perfect complementary inputs. This means there will not be an increase on the amount produced unless both inputs increase in the required proportion. The best example of complementary inputs are shovels and diggers, since the amount of holes will not increase when there are extra shovels without diggers. Notice that the elbows are collinear and the line crossing them defines the proportion in which each input needs to increase in order to have an increase in the production. In this case, the horizontal fragment of each isoquant has a marginal rate of technical substitution equal to zero, 
and the vertical fractions a marginal rate of technical substitution equal to infinite. Having defined and decided the optimal levels of capital and labor we need to produce the different quantities, the line that passes through these optimal levels is an isocline. In other words, it is the line that joins points where the marginal rate of technical substitution of each isoquant is constant. In the real world, the production functions do not usually follow symmetrical paths, and as a result, their isoquant's curve might look more similar to these. As we can see, the isocline line path will be altered. To sum up, the analysis of isoquants is very important when analyzing production. We should also keep in mind the relation between isoquants and the marginal rate of technical substitution and isoclines. There is some relationship between isoquant analysis and marginal rate of technical substitution. The economic region of production shows the different possible combinations of inputs that allow production So this was describing about the relationship between marginal rate of technical substitution and isoquant analysis. Now there is the story about the isoquants, why these are important with the isoquant theory. First of all, we will remember the chapter of consumer theory where we have described the budget line and indifference curve analysis. In the previous chapter, we have described the budget line and here it is called ISO costs. Because whenever you talk about the perspective of producer theory, they always want to minimize the cost. But whenever you think about the consumer theory, they always want to maximize their satisfaction within their budget constraint. So we are describing here the theory of isoquant analysis. It means the production can be calculated or can be measured. But here the cost must be minimized. There is some concept of ISO costs. It is actually showing the different possible combinations of two factors that producer can afford to buy given his total expenditure to be beared or incurred on these factors and price of the factors. Factors are actually the factors of production which are labor and capital and price of the factors are wages and rate of interest. This is showing the basic explanation of ISO cost line and the concept of ISO cost line can be explained with the help of following. Suppose the producer's budget for the purchase of labor and capital is fixed at rupees 100 and further suppose that a unit of labor cost the producer rupees 10 while a unit of capital rupees 20. Total expenditure which the producer wants to pay on the capital and on the labor it is same which is 100 and they are talking about the labor giving the values of the labor and giving the uh, uh, different factor combinations of the capital by using different combinations they are getting some or they are spending some income on the labor and capital. This is actually called the producer's budget which is showing the 100. As we have described in the previous chapter, the budget line was about how to remain in the budget. You can spend within your budget or less than your budget but not more than your budget. And here it is the budget of producer. Previously we have budget of consumer but here this is showing the budget of producer 
it means producers has budget to purchase some units of labor and capital like the budget line the iso cost line can be described here the wl plus rk is equals to c this is the total cost which is incurring by the producer which is equals to the wl means the factor of production and the price of factor of production plus rk rate of interest and capital you can calculate the intercepts as you have calculated the intercepts of the budget line now you can calculate the intercepts of the iso cost line whenever you can say from this uh, iso cost line whenever producer only purchase the labor it means the k will be zero and you can get the intercept of the labor which is c over w whenever the producer will spend all his income on uh, capital it means here the wl will be zero and you can calculate the intercept of the capital by taking r k is equals to c and k can be written as c over r so these are showing the two intercepts of the labor and capital by using the same you can calculate the slope of iso cost line as we have uh, measured the slope of budget line this is showing the slope of iso cost line in the same way you can also calculate the slope of iso cost line which can be written as k is equals to c over r minus w over r l this can be calculated by this from this equation you can see divide r by this whole equation and you will get w over r l plus k is equals to c over r k will be written here and this can be written c over r minus w over l r and you can get this slope of iso cost this slope of iso cost can be calculated vice versa also it means the l can be written here and you can calculate it in terms of capital this iso cost line can be shifted because of changes in expenditure or because of change in labor and capital whenever you see here are some intercepts c over r and it is showing c over w it means c is the total income of a uh, producer here c and whenever you are talking about the wages are increased or rate of interest are increased it means the total income will remain same here you are saying that combination of inputs costing c1 more expensive input bundles it means this is showing the total cost line and whenever you are bearing more cost it means you are purchasing less labor and less capital and you are paying less on the wage rate and less rate of interest so this curve will be shifted inward and whenever you say that wage rate has been increased it means you are pay, paying more or you are bearing more cost so it means this line will also shift inward because the producer is bearing more burden and here you are getting less labor for given input prices iso cost further from the origin are associated with high costs changes in input prices change the slope of iso cost lines you can remember the concept of budget line these are also the linear and in case of budget line you have described x over px and x over py 
sorry i over px and i over py but here it is c over w and c over r in the indifference curve analysis there was the i income and here c is called the total cost or income of producer whenever the things are more expensive it means they are bearing more cost and they are taking less labor and capital this is the factor of production whenever the factors of production are increased they are paying more wages it means they will lay off some workers so this uh, curve will be shifted inward this is the real picture of showing the optimization of input and again you can memorize the concept of consumer equilibrium where the budget line is equals to indifference curve and here it is the iso cost is equals to iso quant analysis and this budget line will touch to the iso quant curve at the lower cost so here it is called uh, optimized input this can be um, explained through the cost minimization concept first of all here we are talking about this is labor and capital on the uh, horizontal and vertical axis and these are showing the intercepts c over w and c over r now we are talking about minimization of costs so it means the whenever the cost will be minimized the cost curve will be shifted inward it means you are paying less wages and less rate of interest but here is the question that where will be the cost minimized or which is showing the optimization of input so whether it is on a point or whether it is on b point whenever you are producing on a point or b point which are giving you the same level of output which is 100 because it is on the same iso quant but at the a point the producer is bearing more cost and on b point the producer is getting less cost so b is showing cost minimizing point let's have a look let's have a look now at the relationship between the input in the production and the output that we want to get and we will introduce the concept that we discussed a couple of videos ago of iso quant i noted here like iq this is the first iq the first iso quant we're discussing at the moment and here it is this orange line and we can see that it is below the iso cost line now what does that mean let's give some numbers that we'll understand for instance at this level at this level we are using let's say three units of labor and four units of capital the three units of labor and four units of capital give us a certain production let's say that quantity that we are producing is equal to 11 11 units now we can clearly see that the budget line the iso cost line allows us to invest more in labor and capital and of course if we invest more in labor and capital we can also produce more let's suppose we go we go higher on the budget line on the budget line let's say now we are going to produce with three units of labor but we're going to use we're going to use seven units of capital with more capital we'll be able to produce more meaning but that the actual production will go higher so we will move the iso quant up we'll move the iso quant over here and we can see that the iso quant now the second iso quant iq2 is tangent to the iso cost at this specific point now recall that this is very similar to the relationship between the consumer behavior where we had the tangency between the indifference curve and the budget line the maximizing level of utility that happens to be on the capacity of the consumer on the budget that the consumer allows so the same goes here we want the maximum production given that we can afford it and in this case the iso cost touches that specific that specific iso quant meaning that the money that we can invest in capital and labor allows us to produce that much more and let's say in that case the iso quant 2 would be 
corresponding to a production would be corresponding to a production of 14 units so clearly we're producing more we can sell it on the market we make more money that's what we're looking for as a firm as a company that's the whole intuition here the optimal point the best that we can do will be at this tangency because even if we want to produce more let's say we go on a higher iso quant we would like this combination of capital and labor to produce more which would be let's say a production of 17 units the thing is we cannot afford it anymore we cannot afford this level of let's say five units of labor and eight units of capital we can't afford it although we would like it we cannot have uh, the money for it so we will stop at the point where we can actually afford it now let's work out the math over here what happens at this tangency point recall that the tangent line tangent line to the iso quant we discussed it in, in a couple of videos ago we're gonna touch on it at the moment that's gonna be the ratio between the marginal productivity with respect to labor divided by the marginal productivity with respect to capital why is that the case because the slope the slope of the tangent line over here shows us how much capital we have to sacrifice how much capital we have to sacrifice to get one more unit of labor and since we get one more unit of labor we are increasing our productivity by that specific amount we get an additional productivity an additional output with respect to increasing that labor relative to giving up some productivity that we could have had from capital so we give up this opportunity we give up the production that we could have if we invested in capital but instead we chose to invest in the labor now we said that we are giving up something in exchange for something else we're giving up uh, capital in exchange for labor meaning that we are paying for the labor to hire that one more employee and we're giving up some interest that we could invest in capital so what we're having is that we're going we're going to pay an additional wage for that for that employee but we're giving up the interest that we could have invested in the capital and now if we make this cross product if we make the cross product over here we will see that we will have the relationship which is marginal product with respect to labor divided by the wage must equal to the marginal product with respect to capital divided by the interest now we consider this equation again very similar to what we had in the consumer behavior question where we had for instance marginal utility with respect to apples divided by the price to apples was equal to the marginal utility with respect to the bananas divided by the price of the bananas what this means is that at the optimal point when we allocate resources in such a way that we cannot do any better is the point where we become indifferent between the allocation because we are getting the most production relative to the cost relative to the wage for the labor in the same way that we're getting the most uh, for the capital by paying the interest on it relative to the cost of capital so if we had for instance that the labor was more productive let's say we would pay the wage and we would get more output out of that it's wiser to invest more in the labor and less in the capital and by the same logic if the capital was more productive relative to the labor it was wise to invest more in the capital and less in the labor and we will keep investing we will keep allocating the resources at the point of the indifference where we just cannot do any better and that happens to be the optimal input combination that happens to be the golden rule so to speak of allocating labor and capital in the context of a firm hope this makes sense and we are done let's have a look let's have a look now at the relationship between the input in the production As in the theory of indifference curve analysis, we have found the slope of indifference curve and the budget line. Whenever they are equated, we have found the consumer equilibrium. Likewise, we have found here the concept of optimization of input. Hello. In this brief recording, we're going to explore the, uh, an issue with isocost and isoquant analysis. In order to uh, understand it, I think the best way is to pose a, a little question. And in our question, what we're asking here is, well, as you can see, a sugar beet refiner has been looking to increase production 
over the next five years to achieve constant returns to scale, but has been told that some additional capital equipment that they've been expecting from a national supplier has been delayed indefinitely. If we assume that there's some substitutability of labour for capital, what might be the consequence of these delays for the firm? Use ISO quant and ISO cost analysis to comment on the efficiency implications of this delay. So we're going to use uh, production uh, functions and we're going to uh, put on those sort of expenditure functions to, to explore uh, the equilibrium of the firm and disturbances to those equilibriums given this delay. So the first thing to recognise is that we've got um, a, a production function really here. We're going to show you the uh, ISO quant lines. The ISO quant lines are the le levels of output that can be produced in for this particular firm. So this could be uh, uh, X could be 100 tonnes per hour if you like and 2X could be 200 tonnes per hour. Uh, and the ISO quant here represents all those particular combinations of machines and workers, labour, in which we could produce 100 tonnes of sugar beet per hour and this one correspondingly shows all those combinations of machines and labour in which we can produce uh, 200 tonnes of uh, sugar beet per hour. And these are our ISO quants, the uh, lines of equal quantity, that's why we get the, the ISO in front of the quant, ISO is Greek for equal. Um, as well as that we have these blue lines and these blue lines represent the prices of the various inputs. So um, what we have here is the relative price of labour over the relative price of machines. And in total, for example, if we spent all our money, all the firm's money, and we only had a certain amount of money, uh, we would be at a point A star uh, if we just used all our spending on labour. And likewise, if we, were at, if we spent all our money on, on machines and nothing on labour, we'd be at point A. Obviously, if we had more expenditure, the firm had more expenditure, we'd be at point B, for example. Uh, if we wanted just machines only with this greater expenditure with no labour or alternatively at B star uh, if we just wanted labour and no machines. So these are the ISO cost lines. They are the uh, reflect the relative prices of labour and machines or capital uh, in which we can purchase um, th these machines or labour. It so happens that the firm in this particular case um, will maximise its efficiency um, by bringing together technical efficiency as shown by the, uh, I, the ISO quant line for example X equals 100 and the ISO cost line here at A to A star um, uh, at point E or indeed we've got a higher level of output and higher level expenditure E1 so where the slope of the ISO quant equals the slope of the ISO cost line or again more technically where the marginal rate of technical substitution of labour for machines that's the slope of the ISO quant equals the uh, price of labour, negative price of labour over the price of machines. In this particular instance we're showing constant returns to scale so, for example, if we're initially at point E, having efficiency, both productive efficiency and cost efficiency at point E, we'd have 10 machines and 20 units of labour uh, in order to produce 100 units of, uh, 100 uh, tonnes of turnip per hour, uh, sorry, sugar beets per hour. And if we um, doubled our inputs from 10 to 20 and 20 to 40, we'd be at a new equilibrium, point E1, where we were having a situation where uh, well, we have what's called constant returns to scale. Doubling your inputs leads to doubling your output. So here, output goes up from 100 to 200. So if the growth path of the firm, and that's what we said in this case, the sugar beet refiner was looking to achieve constant returns to scale, this would be the sort of growth path that it would be on. 
trying to achieve these constant returns to scale. But the question of course asked what would be the case if say machines were delayed. We had a so the number of machines was not uh, flexible and what we would say there is let's say that they were fixed at 10 machines for this particular time period and that uh, ultimately uh, we're in a, in a short run situation so no longer can we achieve E1 we now can only achieve E so what how can we um, achieve greater uh, output with this fixed number of machines well the, the answer is that we uh, find great difficulty in it. we have to expend more money uh, spend more money our costs rise in other words in order to actually achieve this goal so uh, ultimately what this means is that the only way if we've got 10 machines uh, to achieve let's say 200 uh, tons of beetroot sorry 200 tons of sugar beet per uh, hour is to be at this point here uh, and because of the the problems caused by the fixing of uh, machines and that implies that the cost the cost of the firm have increased from B B star to C C star. We need more, uh, certainly of labour, than we would have done before because now we can't substitute away from labour and towards more machines, which we could have done if we'd been allowed to have these machines. So, the ex the expenditure of the firm has risen. The costs of the firm have risen, and that's a particularly important issue. So what we find here is that the long run costs would be much lower than the short run costs and in this case this is because of intervention by um, well by an intervention created by the delays of uh, these machines of course it could have been other things as well we've you know in practical terms you might think about the issues associated with the working time directive in that case what you would have is that there would be a fixed number of hours that the uh, workers could work and that would have an implication but clearly not what would happen is that there'd be a fixing of uh, capital uh, sorry fixing of labor at a certain number of hours and we'd have that red line wouldn't be horizontal it would be this is also showing uh, the sorry the uh, relationship between ISO quant and ISO cost analysis. Whenever you want to produce more, you have to bear more and you will shift new ISO cost curve and new ISO quant curve to produce the higher level of output. So we have described the concept of ISO quant and ISO cost analysis. In the next lecture, we will start the uh, theory of cost or cost of production if you have any query you can ask on the google classroom you can throw uh, any question uh, uh, but keep in mind that uh, watch this video and uh, save this and prepare uh, you have to prepare according to your final exam so Thanks for your attention.